My Hero Academia, Chapter 249. So this was a pretty interesting chapter, you know, a little slice of life, uh, family conflict type of one. But we did have uh, kind of a big development at the end, which is what I'm probably going to be talking about for the majority of this. So let's get into it. So before we get to the actual dinner, it was kind of just giving us a refresher of what was going on. Like they were training for a week straight and it was like hardcore training because we get like a close up of them being all like tattered and torn. And they say earnestly trying to chase after Endeavor, regardless of what translation you have. It means that they were trying their hardest, just trying to keep up with Endeavor, at least to the standards of what he was expecting of them. So they've received some serious training, and they're probably going to get a buff one way or another. Whether it's like their actual quirk being buffed, or just them as heroes being buffed. Because we saw that there was an emphasis put on the individual qualities that Endeavor was talking about, like those three big ones. So they're probably going to be increasing in that aspect as to where their like awareness has been increased and it's also entirely possible that they now have those three individual buffs that they were talking about in the previous chapters and i don't think they're going to be like the masters of these things already of course it's only been a week but in the next battle sequence or the next extended battle sequence we're probably going to start seeing them using those individual techniques so it's going to be Todoroki using his flames to propel himself rather than just using like his ice path as like a, a quick way of mobility and Bakugo using like a concentrated explosion to propel himself the same way that Endeavor uses his hell flame quirk to like use a concentrated version of that to blast himself to get like a quick start uh, like a jet engine almost to, to increase his speed so I'm sure we're going to see that from Bakugo and then as for Izuku, the main focus was just him trying to master his air force and use it effortlessly. So I'm sure he's just going to have that. Like he could just shoot it off no problem. Almost like a gun to this point, I suppose. But we're going to be seeing those, I, I fully expect, in like the next big fight. And then we get to the big dinner that they were talking about in the previous chapter. And it goes down exactly as we more or less expected it would. There's a lot of tension and it's really awkward. And mainly from like Natsuo and Endeavor because they still have some serious beef. Even more so than what Shoto and Endeavor has. And it, we're just finding out some little funny quirky things like the maid that they or the housekeeper that they used to have uh, no longer is with them because she like threw her back out or something. And we might have actually seen the housekeeper in the original flashback that we got where we saw the back of to uh, Toya when he was like playing with Natsuo and Fuyumi uh, when um, Endeavor was dragging like a, a Shoto across, you know, back in season two. Now that might have been brought up for a reason or it was just a device to create more tension between Natsuo and Endeavor and give him a, an excuse to like leave because it's like that's also giving us an explanation why to, Fuyumi and Natsuo are taking turns cooking because he was like yeah dad doesn't like it my cooking because I overseason it or whatever translation you got and then after that he kind of left and then after that we get uh, an interesting little scene where we get more development on Rei uh, Shoto's mom pouring the boiling water on his face like we're seeing what happened after that I don't think we ever saw uh, the moments after we kind of just saw like her pouring it or at least like the moment leading up to it and then it just cut to him having like the bandage on his face but we're seeing the like she immediately like caressed him and started using her quirk on him uh, which is you know very sad very tragic moment but I also think like putting ice on a severe burn uh, immediately after it happens is probably like a really bad thing you're not supposed to do that, so I, I don't know, maybe this was just misinformation by Horikoshi here, but it also goes into, like, a crazy, sporadic moment like that. You know, hardcore tragedy, you're not really thinking, and your, in, your uh, reflexes just kick in, and you start using your ice quirk to, like, help him, but I guess that's besides the point. It's just adding to that moment and putting more emotional weight on it. And also, if you happen to read that letter behind Shoto's face on that same page where we see her putting the ice quirk on him as a kid, it more or less says that she could possibly be coming home soon because of like her good behavior at the uh, hospital place that she's at. So we might see Ray eventually come back into the story like with the home life and everything. And then we're going to have that whole little incidence between her and Endeavor and then the whole new family dynamic possibly. I mean, I more or less assumed that she was going to come back eventually, but it might be sooner than later given if the letter is pretty accurate and when it's portraying. Then we get that little interesting uh, moment with Bakugo where he's like, if you're going to invite guests over, then quit showing us your family drama. That's a little interesting uh, moment from Bakugo because it goes more into like the complex character that he is because like he does want it to be nice, like little family dinner time. 
But it also goes to, like, how he's, like, sometimes very odd with his social mannerisms. The same way that he was, like, during the sports festival and, of course, countless times before that. But, I don't know, it's just it's just weird how he acts in this uh, situation. Maybe I'm overanalyzing it. So then we come to the final page and we see Endeavor walking over to, like, this shrine thing. And we see, for the first time, Toya's face. And before this, we had just seen him from the back, and we saw, like, an obscure uh, picture of his face. We never really saw him this clear. And, yeah, it's definitely Dobby. I mean, we all know, like, 90% of the fan base pretty much knows that this is going to happen eventually. I would be ultra surprised if Horikoshi just decides to not make it Dobby because he knows that probably everybody has figured it out by then, and he just does it to, like throw a wrench at us because you know we figured it out and he's like hey you think you could figure out my stuff well i'm just gonna change it just to screw you guys over but that would be odd because i'm sure he's already had this story planned out from the very beginning or at least the majority of the you know the integral storylines that make up this overall story and i also think this is pretty much confirming that toya did die or is believed to be dead because before this i don't think we ever really got an official confirmation on it it was kind of just implied that something bad happened to him and we all just assumed he was dead but i don't think it was ever outright said also like the implications of what Natsuo says during the pro hero arc when he's talking to Endeavor, he's like, not to mention what happened to Big Bro Toe. So given that he also looks so young in this picture, this might have been the time where he was supposedly dead, and then whatever happened after that led him to becoming Dobby. So I guess this means that we're going to get this reveal pretty soon, or this just could be Horikoshi still just, you know, giving us little breadcrumbs, or at least what he thinks is breadcrumbs, and... We're just going to get the reveal towards, like, the end of the next big battle that's going to happen. You know, the big four months thing, possibly. And then I assume that Dobby might just straight up kill Endeavor at that point. Because I think we're all have this lingering feeling that Endeavor's probably not going to make it to the end of the series. But anyway, how did Toya become Dobby? And how does everybody not know that he's still alive? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Maybe Toya thought that he was dead and then like he woke up randomly and then escaped or maybe he planned his own death to get away from Endeavor because of the harsh training and abuse that he was putting under him and he was like I can't take this anymore I gotta get away and he was maybe the only kid who was uh, fortunate enough to actually get away from Endeavor rather than like having to put up with his BS and then maybe also given
like uh, a picture of him when he was young, so we could assume this was around the time when he probably, uh, uh, supposedly he died. Maybe this was what set off Ray, and maybe that was like the tipping point when she like poured the water on uh, Shoto's face, possibly. That's pretty much it for the video today, guys. Let me know what you think about all of this, and if you liked it, please give it a like. I also have a Patreon to give you access to a weekly Q&A, and if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Have a great day.